November 25th, 1947. The United States. Four days before the UN would vote for the partition plan to grant Israel its statehood. Israeli Arab tensions are spiraling madly, hurling the region to the brink of war. But in the old city of Jerusalem, two men stand beside the Jaffa Gate, separated by a barbed wire security fence, with something far more benign on their minds. Elazar Sukhanik, a Jewish professor of archaeology at the Hebrew University, faces an Armenian antiquities dealer. Through the barrier's crevices, the dealer displays an ancient-looking fragment with Hebrew script. Zukenik is curious and excited. In his diary entry for that date, Zukenik records, a Hebrew book has been discovered in a jar. He showed me a fragment written on parchment. Geniza? Sukhenik was the first Jew since ancient times to behold a fragment from a vast collection that had just begun to be unearthed in the Dead Sea region. He actually was the first one to recognize the antiquity of the scroll, and he knew the date the minute he looked at the script. He recognized it from some of the monuments around Jerusalem that had similar type of script. Now, he had no idea really that was going to open up a whole world to us in terms of not just the Dead Sea community, but a lot of things about Judaism in the period. I think it's fair to say that the Dead Sea Scrolls are the most important archaeological discovery of the 20th century. About a year earlier, three Bedouin shepherds were tending their sheep and goats on the northwestern side of the Dead Sea. These shepherds would habitually explore desert caves, one of them flung a rock into a cave that was situated above the plateau where his animals were grazing. He heard the sound of something shattering within the cave. We now know that this particular Bedouin family was specializing in hunting for antiquities. So these kids threw a stone into a cave. They heard something. They went in, and before they knew it, they had discovered the first seven Dead Sea Scrolls. The shepherds failed to comprehend the meaning or value of what they had found, but they removed the scrolls, which were then passed through several hands over the course of a year, until a scroll fragment was displayed to Sukhenik by the Jaffa Gate. During the following decade, thousands of fragments believed to be from approximately 900 different scrolls came to light. Now these scrolls were mostly written in Hebrew. We generally say that about 80% were in Hebrew, about 20% were in Aramaic, and there are some very small fragments written in Greek. There's a date of composition, and of course that goes way, way back because the earliest scrolls are the Torah. But the sectarian documents were primarily written in the second and first centuries before the Common Era. Now, if we talk about the date of copying, therefore, again, second, first centuries, and a few in the first century CE, the ancient parchments were discovered in 11 distinct caves in the vicinity of the ruins of an ancient settlement that locals referred to as Qumran. There is ample evidence to link the scrolls with the ancient settlement. They, first of all, fit the same chronology in terms of what we know from archaeology and from the study of the scripts and carbon-14 dating. But then, as important, or maybe even more, we have what we call the pottery assemblages. Now, what's unique in these pottery assemblages is these big jars, which are really food storage jars, in which they put scrolls. These are found almost nowhere else, but they're found in large numbers in these caves and in these buildings. In addition to the overwhelming use of Hebrew or Aramaic, many of the parchments are copies of sections of the Bible, the oldest copies known to be in existence. Clearly, they are Jewish scrolls, written and copied by Jews for Jews. But which ancient Jews authored or commissioned these scrolls? What were their beliefs and practices? And what was their relationship with the rest of the Jewish community of the ancient homeland? As we discover more about these fascinating artifacts of ancient Israel, we will find ourselves confronted by an intriguing and great debate among Jewry of antiquity. A debate that lay undisturbed for millennia 
among the arid rocks bordering the Dead Sea. 